Hey everyone, Greg here to break down Star Trek Discovery Season 3 Episode 10 Terra Firma Part 2. Chastity is out this week, but don't worry, we'll be back together next week for Episode 11. Spoilers ahead, let's jump in. Part 2 kicks off with Terran Michael thrown into the brig, and she's begging the Emperor to kill her just like Georgia wanted Prime Burnham to kill her for her honor in Part 1. Give me the honor I deserve! You deserve many things. It seems Burnham believes that Giorgio is retiring after she promised them new worlds to conquer. Burnham also hints at problems on the horizon, the coalition of allies forming against her, including the Klingons, Romulans, and Andorians. Giorgio throws the new info to the wind and sticks Michael in the agonizer. She's determined to change the course of the future and bring Burnham back on her side. Why do they only learn from pain? Even Killy demands an explanation, and Giorgio promises her that Michael will come around. Refusing food and no cooperation, Burnham was in the agonizer for months. This led to Detmer begging her to change her mind, after she delivers the news that her co-conspirator and lover Lorca has disappeared and is not coming back. And in a final plea, Giorgio shows compassion and brings her fireflies, promising to bring the light to her once more. Sure enough, it works. Finally broken, Michael kneels before Giorgio. And this leads to a montage of Burnham assassinating her fellow conspirators, bringing the badges to the Emperor with the final dagger saved for Detmer. Now it's done. In conversation, we learn from Michael that Lorca is hiding under the pseudonym Vicar, and trusting the new and improved Burnham, Giorgio sends her out to find and kill him. Next, in the Emperor's quarters, Terran Saru resigns, declaring Vaharai, and then Giorgio proceeds to tell him more than she probably should. She reveals the truth about the condition which she learned in the Prime timeline, and that Saru is not dying from the Kelpian evolutionary trait. At this point, Saru knows something's up, and he begs her to return to her universe. Of course, George Ode sees no problem and proceeds with her Burnham reclamation project. Moments later, Discovery heads to Ryza to intercept one of Lorca's lieutenants, Duggan. And when they arrive, Discovery immediately disables his ship and beams him to the brig, despite his warnings to George Ode that something is wrong. You're going down, Emperor sooner than you think. Side note, you can tell that Giorgio knows something's up when she gives a quick response to Killy. Say hello. Of course, Emperor. And in the quick exchange with Burnham when they head to the brig. If you're having second thoughts. No, I'm not, Mother. I promise you. I'm ready. It turns out Giorgio and Duggan were correct. Michael, with the help of several officers, kill him, holding the Emperor at phaser point. Of course, Giorgio is no fool as Killy and post Vaharai Saru burst in for the rescue, as mother and daughter face off. Unfortunately, the Emperor has no choice at this point but to kill Burnham, just before Giorgio herself succumbs to her wounds and dies in Saru's arms. Giorgio's eyes close in the Mirror Universe, and they open in the Prime Universe back with Carl, played by Paul Guilfoyle, and Prime Burnham on Danis 5. And, in the inner light fashion, it's only been a minute of real time on the frosty planet. Finally, Carl reveals the truth about everything. He shows his true form as the Guardian of Forever, from the classic TOS episode, The City on the Edge of Forever. It turns out, during the Temporal Wars, all sides tried to weaponize Carl, causing him to go into hiding. The Guardian tells Giorgio that she was never actually sent back to the Mirror Universe. Rather, she was being weighed, given a moral test to see how much she had changed in the Prime Universe. She showed capacity and promise to save many lives, so Carl, I mean the Guardian, creates a portal encouraging her to go back in time when the Mirror and Prime Universes were closer together. This will save her life, but it also means that she'll have to say goodbye to Burnham once again. In the final exchange, Michael tells her that she is her Philippa, and she's no substitute for her Prime Universe mentor. And before she leaves, Giorgio tells Michael to look to the captain's chair, claiming that she's capable of more than she thinks. The two give one final salute, and Giorgio heads off to parts unknown. Meanwhile, back on the Prime Discovery, Adira and Stamets are having problems trying to hack the crashed Kelpian ship. And before the two can try anything else, an angry Jet Reno finally returns. You're, you're not allowed to have food in here. This isn't food. It's candy. It's practically an accessory. After being hinted at by Saru in part one, Book comes to the rescue, making good on Saru's words to prove himself useful. He gives them a subspace range extender via the Emerald Chain, and it works. When Saru briefs Vance, he's not thrilled to learn the means that were used to get the intel. But Saru defends Book's actions, and in private, Vance believes that he withheld information about the ship initially due to their Kelpian captain. This could be the series signaling that Saru may break from the Federation if he needs to help the Kelpians in future adventures. From there, Book greets Michael who falls into his arms in grief. And when Michael briefs Saru on Giorgio, she tells him that she's dead. This might be to protect the Temporal Accords. 
due to the fact that they found the Guardian of Forever, and they don't want anyone else to find that out and ruin the timeline. Afterwards, they join the rest of the crew who gather for a funeral for the former Terran Emperor. To Philippa. To Philippa. Now it's time for things we noticed and Easter eggs. Discovery finally answered the long-held question about Giorgio's presence on the Disco ship, paving the way for Michelle Yeoh's led Section 31 spinoff that's on the way. From all the facts that we were given this season about the Temporal Wars, we may be able to piece together what the Section 31 spinoff could look like. Giorgio was likely sent at least 900 years back in time. Given her knowledge of the USS Discovery mission and her knowledge of the future, such as the Burn, not only will Section 31 need to track her down, so will Temporal Agents in order to make sure she doesn't disturb future events. It looks like the spinoff could dive into the Temporal Wars and we might see Giorgio as a badass Section 31 time cop. Sign us up, please. Really? I am the Guardian of Forever. It turns out the tiny clues that we picked up last week were enough that Carl is in fact the Guardian of Forever. The standing wooden door transforms into the iconic yet reimagined Discovery Era stone time portal first seen 53 years ago in the TOS classic The City on the Edge of Forever, complete with archival audio from original voice actor Bart LaRue. All is as it was before. Many such journeys are possible. Let me be your gateway. Giorgio says, He chose the name Vicar for himself. It means substitute. This is a nod to season one Lorca, as we know he jumped into the Prime Universe and led the crew of the Discovery on his own secret mission back to the Mirror Universe to kill Emperor Giorgio. The Terran Discovery heads to Ryza to intercept one of Lorca's lieutenants, Duggan. Ryza is the popular pleasure planet featured in multiple episodes of Trek, including the TOS episode, Captain's Holiday. Do you seek Jamaharon? I don't even know what it means. In this episode, we learn that Duggan's alias is Carnelian. While Carnelian pops up in Trek novels, on the series it was name dropped by Picard. When mentioning Lieutenant Natasha Yar's bravery to her sister, Picard recalled the time Yar risked her life to rescue a wounded colonist from a Carnelian minefield in the TNG episode Legacy. When referring to the Coalition, Michael tells Emperor Giorgio, It's called the Coalition! And the Denobulans, and the Regilians, and the Caridonites will follow. You should attack now. Tellarites are a pig-like species from the planet Teller Prime who first appeared in the TOS episode Journey to Babel. The Noblians were featured in Star Trek Enterprise. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Flox was a Denoblian. Regilians have appeared in Enterprise and Lower Decks. As for the Caridonites, if you recall Cal from earlier this season, he was a Caridonite. That's it for us over here, everybody. Let us know what you thought of this episode in the comments down below. Chastity and I will be back here next week for episode 11. Bye-bye.